Let's talk more about all of this with James Boys. James, a professor of international politi political studies at Richmond University in London, joining this hour from our London Bureau. A pleasure to have you with us. Good to see you, George. Thank you for having me on this morning. Thank you, James. And uh, let's start with the Attorney General uh, here in the U.S. expected to be the first to see Robert Mueller's report. How do you see that playing out, James, uh, with Democrats pushing to make this report public, as public as possible? Well, it's fascinating, isn't it, quite frankly? Here we are over two years into the Trump presidency, and for the first time ever, he has a, a full-time attorney general who is not in any way tainted by allegations of involvement with regard to this. Of course, Jeff Sessions had to recuse himself. We've had uh, uh, various individuals trying to uh, take place in the, in the part to get away from that. Now we have uh, uh, William Barr, frankly, uh, about to take possession of this report. Nobody knows, of course, when it's coming in. There had been suggestions that the report was going to be coming in within the next uh, couple of days, maybe as early as next week. We now expect that to be pushed back. But certainly, it's, um, it's uh, as you'd expect, the Attorney General is, um, is going to be the reporting line uh, for Robert Mueller. So it would be understandable that he would get the first look at this. The great question is, what happens then? Because, of course, you know, we all want to see what's in it. Democrats want to see what's in it. Um, whether the White House wants us to see what's in it is a very different situation. Of course, the American Constitution and the relationship between the Attorney General and the United States is an interesting one. For far too long, I think, many people thought that Donald Trump saw the Attorney General as his attorney somehow and not the Attorney General of the United States. And of course, it's not the Attorney General's job to protect the American president, but to, uh, to preside over all the investigations and to be America's chief law enforcement officer. So the extent to which we get to see that will, I think, tell us a great deal about William Barr's political independence. And I think if there are any moves to try to prevent its release, you'll certainly see a uh, very, very strong pushback uh, from the, uh, the Democrats, especially in the House of Representatives, of course, to uh, either get it released or to potentially subpoena, I think, uh, Robert Mueller to find out exactly what is in that report. So, you know, many people will be watching and waiting to see what happens with that. But through court filings, uh, James, interesting, we've been getting key insights into Mueller's investigation. It is as if he's been writing his report in public for many. Uh, do you think we can expect any surprises when that report is finally released? Yeah, I think so, because I think um, most people, I think, will acknowledge that Mueller's team has run a very tight shop. Um, there's been a, a distinct lack of leaks in many ways with regard to it. That has been frustrating, I think, for many, particularly, I think, within the media who would like to have an idea about what is going on. But, of course, it is exactly the right way to run such an investigation. I think if there had been a whole series of leaks, uh, those who are being uh, investigated would quite rightly say that this is being uh, uh, an, an inappropriate way of dealing with this situation. So when the report comes out, it will be fascinating to see uh, the level uh, of indictments, who's indicted, uh, if ind indictments are to follow, uh, and to see the exact contents. But uh, right now, it's the, uh, the ultimate guessing game, I guess. What's in the report? When will it be made public? And who will be, um, who will be named within it? It's a lot happening in D.C. And, oh, yes. you know, another thing that's very important is uh, this uh, meeting between the U.S. president and the North Korean leader. When it comes down to this meeting, how important will it be uh, to see concrete moves toward denuclearization uh, more than optics? Well, I think that if Donald Trump is to come out of this with anything tangible, there needs to be some moves in some tangible direction. Um, give the president his due. Um, he has, I think, made great strides with regard to uh, having these talks. Uh, they are talks, I think, which if somebody had said two years ago were up to happen, many people would be quite incredulous. Uh, so let's give the president credit for that. Um, but, but for them to be meaningful, they have to lead to meaningful uh, development. And we have seen, I think, this president uh, be someone who is very um, uh, dubious about any agreements that he has not personally been involved in. We've seen uh, in recent weeks uh, uh, pushbacks against previous uh, arms limitation treaties, the INF Treaty, for example, most recently. So it will be um, vital, I think, if we are to see tangible steps towards denuclearization on the Korean Peninsula and a restoration of peace in that part of the world. 
uh, for moves, I think, to end the North Korean uh, um, uh, nuclear program. The great question, of course, is what will North Korea demand in exchange? And will President Trump be in a position that he feels able to uh, address those, uh, that, that trade-off uh, without betraying the, Korean, uh, the South Korean uh, security, which, of course, the U.S. has long provided? James Boys, we appreciate your insight today. Thank you so much. Thank you, George. Surrendering to police.